the power is back. So I'm back again here. It's been a little while. I've been busy, but I've been getting a lot of support the last couple of videos. And, you know, keep, continue doing that. Keep, you know, leaving comments, reach out to me. All it does is inspire me to do more. So right now I'm about to show you kind of a little bit more in depth here of my process on how I do sampling. So I'm going to kind of show you exactly the steps that you need to take, you know, to actually go in and, cut and get the sample that you want, chop it up, and then kind of do it. So this is going to be more in depth. So let's get to it. All right, so here we are. We're in Audacity here. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to go in here. You're going to import some audio. So now I've got a song imported in Audacity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to it and cut out the part I want. This part's a little bit different because I did skip a step last time since I was doing it off of a record. I was actually had the record player hooked into my computer. Pretty simple. You just need you know, an interface or some kind of an adapter that will allow you to do that. You know, hook your record player in and you know, spin it off the record and record it into here. So that's the only difference between last time versus this time. Instead of using it from a record, this is from an MP3 that was already ripped. But it's the same process. The only difference is just kind of, I'll show you for demonstration purposes only. If you were doing it on a record, here, let me open up a new one. If you were using a record, what you would have to do is you have to do a new stereo track. Obviously, you have something plugged in, hit record. I don't have anything plugged in, but that's the only difference. You would hit record, and obviously, after you get the part you want, you hit stop. And then that file that you saw in the other one, that would be on there. So that's the only difference. But we're skipping ahead because we're not doing the record this time. This time we're just going straight to this here. So, all right, so first you just gotta play it and find what you want. Also, this is gonna be cut out just because of the copyright issues here. Like I said, that's the main reason I don't really do sampling too much. We have I made the selection I want. So you gotta go ahead and split. Then you can copy that. Make yourself a new stereo track. That's the beginning. Make sure you got it selected. Paste it in. You don't need this anymore. You got the part I want. I'm going to export it as a way. Man, new folder called Chops here. And then just like that, we're done. All right, so now we're in LMMS. Just like last time, we're going to have to open up a vestige here. Actually, what I like to do is, I like to bring up a beat bass line editor. So now we're going to get bring up a vestige. Now we're going to bring up short circuit. Okay, so now we got short circuit up. And also, too, we got to go to MIDI, switch your input to your USB MIDI controller, whatever one you're using. All right, so now just like last time. All right, so you're going to hit load. And then as you can see, I've got everything in here. And I made a folder called Chops, like from before. You know, that's where I put the sample selection I made. Click on that, bring it up. And now, as you can see, I gotta go to a uh, MIDI keyboard here. And then we're gonna find that note. I'm gonna do Learn. So it is velocity sensitive, as you can see. All right. So now what we gotta do is you're gonna go in and you're gonna chop, find where you wanna make your chops at. So let's do that part now. So here's what you're gonna do. Like you remember from last time, right here, this little selection where it says forward, we're gonna change that to sliced key map. So I want my first one. Then you are gonna right click on it, hit split slice, and it's gonna put it on the next key. You're gonna put this where you want it at. Okay, 
Okay, I'm trying to find where I want it. As you can see, you can just kind of click on the edges of these here, and kind of move them around. That way you can get the length exactly where you want it. Then you're going to find where you want to put your next one at. Same thing, right click it, split. And I get the gist. So now we kind of got some chops going. I'm going to get that. Oh! I think I missed it. I don't know. Things before that. There we go. Now, as you know, first things first, you gotta set the tempo. So I did there, I kind of put a couple of filters on it to kind of give it a different type of a sound. So now that I kind of got an idea here, where I usually go next, I usually try to figure out what I'm going to do with the, you know, actually percussion and the bass line on it first. So that way, that kind of gives me an idea what direction I'm going to go with the rest of it. Because I usually, when I try to do sampling, I try to put other things on top of it so that, you know, it's not as obvious what I sample. I'm not the kind of guy that likes to preserve any of the sample I like to try to completely change the context of it do this where I kind of make the notes touching each other for whenever I do these kick samples. This is better, it sounds better to me when you have a kick sample to make them more legato like that so that they're all touching each other because it gives you these weird like clicks um, from the note stopping if you don't do that. So that's the reason why I always go ahead and drag these so they're next to each other like that. So if you notice here too, since I have a kick as well as that low bass, I do have to go in and do this. I got to get them out of the way of each other. So I'm going to go in on this kick drum here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a high pass filter. And I'm going to cut off some of those lows out of this one so that it's out of the way. And the bass underneath it has plenty of room. So 
so you hear that it's still there i just had to bring it a little bit of the low out of it so it's out of the way of the other bass Since I changed the pitch, I have to make sure that the tempo still matches because it doesn't preserve tempo. the only thing I would really do to it is like put special effects on it because you gotta leave room for the vocal that's really all I would do but yeah that's pretty much what I came up with so this is just another sampling tutorial slash cook up for you here yeah, but thanks for watching I appreciate it make sure like I said if you have any questions reach out to me leave a comment I love it and I'll uh, see you guys next time that's all I got to say for now okay I love you bye bye <laughs>